is Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. We give you praise tonight. And we worship you and honor you. And thank you for everything that you are doing for us. Amen. Praise the Lord. Get ready for this new week coming. It can be better. Amen. With God's help, it can be better. And God can help us and God can guide us. And he can, he can work in our life as we look to him and trust in him. Amen. And so I want to read to you tonight from the Gospel of Mark. We'll read the Gospel of Mark chapter 9. Verse 20 through 24. Mark chapter 9, verses 20 through 24. And they brought him unto him, talking about the boy. They brought him to Jesus. And when he saw him, straightway the spirit tear him, and he fell on the ground and wallowed foaming. And he asked his father, how long is it ago since this came unto him? And he said, of a child. And oftentimes it had cast him into the fire and into the waters to destroy him. But if thou can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. And Jesus said unto him, if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. And straightway the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe. Help thou my unbelief. I want to use that verse as a text for tonight. And straightway the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe. Help thou my unbelief. And so I want to use it tonight, and with the help of the Lord, I know it's a silly title, but it's a true title for tonight. I want to preach about Lord, help me. Lord, help me. Let's look to God in prayer tonight. Marv, would you please pray? Amen. Amen. So preaching about Lord, Lord help me. You know, sometimes that's, that's one of the greatest prayers we can pray. You know, Pastor Olson had talked about many times he will pray, Lord, be gracious to me. Lord, be gracious to me. Because at different times we all face different things in our life and we need God's help. I don't know about you, but I do. On a daily basis. <laughs> I need the help of the Lord. And so sometimes the simplest prayers can be the most powerful one. And here this man, he brought his son to Jesus. It was a very sad situation if you think about it. Where this father brought his child, his young child to Jesus. And asked Jesus to help him, to, to cast out his demon from him. And, and what, what is so sad about this is that uh, the Bible said this young boy was possessed with an with, with evil spirit, with a devil. And Jesus asked him, he said, how long, how long since this came upon him? And he said, since he was a child. And so it can show you that Satan has no respect for people, for lives. He has no respect if he can destroy children when they're young, he will do it. He will do it if he can. And we've seen it today in our culture and throughout the world that all these young children, it's so sad what they're doing to these young children trying to mess their mind up and all these things and, and cause them to think that there's something they're not and change who God made them to be and all this stuff. And, and it shows you that there's a spirit behind it all. There's a wicked spirit behind it all. It, and it shows you that even in this young child, this evil spirit took over his life and it was trying to destroy him. And a lot of times we don't realize that, that, yeah, well, this, he's a young child, but he said he's this and, and, and she said she's that. And but we don't know the spirit that is working in them. Because their parent didn't protect them in praying for them or whatever the situation may be. However this came about, maybe there was no, there was no guidance in this young, young child's life. And so he was opened up and exposed to things that were not right. And he became possessed with his devil. But thank God he had a father that cared. Thank God he had a father that, 
that wanted to help him, and so he brought him to Jesus. The best thing we can do is to bring our kids to Jesus Christ. The best thing we can do is bring our case to the Lord so God can help us. And, 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 and it's, not a, it's not something we should take lightly or, or say, well, you know, God doesn't care about us. God cares about everything. God cares about every situation in our life. And, and so the best thing we can do in our life is to bring our situation to God and say, Lord, help me. <laughs> help me, Jesus. I don't know how to deal with this situation. I don't know. This is too big. It's too heavy for me. It's, a, it's a stealing what's good in my life, the peace and the, the, the confidence and the happiness and everything. And, and Satan is trying to put all these doubts and everything in my, in my mind. Lord, help me, Jesus. Help me to overcome this. Help me to have faith, uh, to believe you. Help me, God, to trust in you when I don't see, when I can't see, when I'm not able to understand. Help me, Lord, to believe you. Amen? See, there's a quote that said, Faith is not about everything turning out okay, but faith is about being okay no matter how things turn out. Faith is simply this, genuine confidence or genuine confidence in the power and the ability of God and we all have faith we all have faith to believe and so God gave us this faith he dealt to every man a measure of faith to believe but sometimes even with the faith that God has given unto us we need help even with the faith that God has given unto us, we need help. And so that's what brought us down to this Bible, or bring us here to this Bible, Bible reading. When the man spoke to Jesus, he, we'll read again, he said, And they brought him, the young boy, unto Jesus, to him. And when he saw him, straightway the spirit tear him. So while the father was bringing him to Jesus, the devil was at work. He was trying to destroy one last chance to destroy this young boy. One last chance to rip him apart. One last chance to mess him up. And the Bible said that, that, that he tear him. And straight with the spirit tear him. And he fell on the ground and was wallowing, foaming. He was, it was like having a seizure, if you will. He was foaming at the mouth and, and all this stuff was going on. And, and the Bible said in verse 21, and, and he asked his father, how long is it that goes since this came unto him? And he said, of a child. And oftentimes, listen to what Satan was trying to do, to do to this young boy. He said, and oftentimes it had cast him into the fire and into the water. He was trying to burn this young child, get him to kill himself. He was trying to drown him, get him to go out into the water to drown himself. So Satan was working, busy trying to destroy this young child's life. He said, and oftentimes it had cast him into the fire and into the water to destroy him. But if thou canst do anything have compassion on us and help us. Oh, what a prayer. God, if you can do anything in this situation. God, if you can do anything in my life. God, if you can do anything, just help me, Jesus. Help me with what I'm facing with right now. Help me with what I'm going through. Help me with what I am dealing with, Lord God. Just help me. I need your help, Jesus. I need you to step into my life this time, this moment in my life. I need you, Lord, to step into my life and help me. Help me with what I'm dealing with, what I have to face, uh, what's happening in my situation, what situation I may find myself in. God, step in and help me. Yeah? Help me, Jesus. Uh, give me the help that we, need, that we need. And so he went down there in verse 22, or verse 23. And Jesus said to him, If thou canst believe, all things, all things are possible to him that believeth. So Jesus, in a sense, called this man to exercise faith. He said, you're coming to me with your problem. You're bringing this need. Your son has a, uh, you have a, your son have a need in his life. You're bringing the situation to me. But Jesus said, if you can believe, if you can believe, he said, all things are possible to him that uh, believe it. But I like the way they, I love the answer of the, of the father. And this is what brings it down to the message. Because uh, we all believe. We all have some, some elements or some degree of where we believe God, but there comes a time when we really need some help. Amen? When we really need some help, and he said there in verse 24, And straightway the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe. He cried out with tears and he said, Lord, I believe you. I believe you. But he went on. He said, and straightway the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe, 
help thou mine unbelief. You see, there were still some things in his life that was keeping him from believing God fully. Even though he believed the Lord, he brought it, he brought the child to Jesus. So you have faith. He bring his case to the Lord Jesus Christ. He brought his child to Jesus. He believed that Jesus could do something. He believed that Jesus will have compassion. But there was something in his mind, in his heart, uh, where he couldn't fully believe the Lord. And so he immediately made that a prayer. Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. Help our unbelief, Jesus. Uh, help us to, if there's any doubt in our heart, help us to cast it away. Help us, Lord God, to bring it all to you and just lay it on the altar and say, God, uh, help my unbelief. There are things that I'm still struggling to believe you with, God. There are things that I'm still dealing with that I can't seem to get uh, the faith enough to believe it. Uh, Satan is fighting. All these, n n n these thoughts, these nagging thoughts of doubt uh, are trying to, st to, to creep into my mind and cause me to not trust God and believe God but Lord I'm coming to you Lord Jesus uh, help my unbelief amen what a prayer to pray tonight Jesus help my unbelief uh, if there's any unbelief in my mind if there's any unbelief in my heart God I'm bringing it to you Take it out. Just help me to, to get rid of these nagging thoughts. Help me to get rid of these things that are destroying my faith in you. I want to believe you, Lord Jesus. I want to trust you. I want to put it all in your hand. But God, there's some things that are holding me back from doing that. Oh God, I'm praying, help me tonight. Help me to believe you. Help me to trust you, God. Help me to put it all in your hands and leave it there and walk away with confidence knowing that I'm trusting in the Almighty. I'm trusting in Jesus. I'm trusting in the one who can help me to overcome all these things. Lord, help my unbelief. Make that a prayer. Sometimes we all need this, God. Help my unbelief, God. Just take it out. Help me to get rid of these, uh, these thinking, these things that are trying to, to, to steal the peace that God wants me to have. Help my unbelief, Jesus. There's another situation. I don't think this is a, a silly prayer to pray. <laughs> this is the best prayer sometimes. God, be merciful to me. God, be gracious to me. Peter, when he was walking on the water with Jesus, the Bible said he took his eyes off the Lord, and immediately he began to sink. He began to sink, and, and guess what he did? He didn't let his pride get in the way and say, oh, well, well, I'm sinking. I might as well start swimming or do something. No. The Bible said immediately he cried out, Lord, save me. <laughs> what he was saying, Lord, help me, Jesus. Help me, Lord, I'm drowning. I'm sinking. I'm going down. Lord, help me. And so he cried out to the Lord. I'm saying it may be the simplest prayer, but sometimes it is the most needed prayer or the most powerful prayer is, Lord, Help me, Lord, help me. How many of the disciples have called out to the Lord, help me, Jesus? How many people over the years in the history of mankind, when they, don't, when, they don't, when they can't find the words to articulate a nice, fancy prayer, they just got on their knees and said, Lord, help me. They just got down there and said, you know what, God? This is not a time for fancy prayer. This is not a time for eloquence. This is not a time for something great. This is a desperate situation. Lord, help me. Lord, I just need your help right now i need you god if there's any unbelief in me god help me to get rid of these unbelief and so that's what the father prayed he didn't make something fancy or something great he just said lord i believe help my unbelief take away these unbelief in my heart take away these doubts take away all these things that are keeping me back from fully trusting you and he didn't try to get fancy he just got down lord you already know me lord i believe you help my unbelief sometimes we just need God to help us sometimes we just need God to get to get in there and strengthen us where we are weak in those areas where we don't seem to to have the confidence and the faith in God that's where we need to address that prayer God help my unbelief amen help my unbelief Jesus just help me Lord I don't need to be fancy right now I just need help amen I just need help. The father brought, it to Je brought his son to Jesus. Help my son, Jesus. Help him, Lord, if you can do anything. Have compassion. Have compassion upon us. Uh, there's another story about uh, this man, Jairus, where he was uh, 
he went to Jesus. His daughter was laying sick at home. Laying sick at home, 12 years old. And he came to Jesus and said, Lord, I want you to help us, Lord. And Jesus said, I come, I come heal your daughter. And as he was going there, bad news came that the daughter had died, passed away. But as soon as Jesus heard it, the Bible said, uh, he said, he said to the man in Mark 5, 36, And as soon as Jesus heard the words that were spoken, he said unto the ruler of the synagogue, Be not afraid, only believe. Be not afraid, only believe. You know, sometimes we need, to, <laughs> we need to hear those words from God. Don't be afraid, only believe. Only believe. Help our unbelief, Jesus. The Bible tells us in Hebrews chapter, six, chapter, six, uh, chapter 4, verse 16. I'll read a little bit more for you. It's not on there, but I'll read it. He said in verse, four, in, 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 in verse 14 of Hebrews 4, he said, seeing then, we, seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all point tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. He said, let's hear, he said, God can be touched with our feelings. You said, preacher, I'm feeling pretty messed up right now, emotionally, mentally, spiritually. God knows. Amen. God knows. He was tempted in every point, just as we are. He went through the things that we, we are going through. Everything that we may have to go through in life, Jesus already went through it. Amen. He already went through it while he was on earth and he'd been doing it for thousands and thousands of years as he was dealing with mankind, his people, his creation. He knows exactly what we're going through and he said, we have this high priest that understands. We have this high priest that know. We have this high priest that can feel, that can relate to us. He's not someone, and that's the reason why Jesus came to earth. It's so that one of the reasons, of course, we know the major and the most important reason was to redeem us, to die on the cross for our sins and to offer himself as a sacrifice for sin and that through his blood and his resurrection, we can be saved. That's the ultimate purpose. And he also came to destroy all the works of Satan. We all that. But one of the reasons why he came and took upon him human flesh is so that he can feel what we feel. So that he can understand what we understand. So he's not sitting in heaven, having never gone through what we go through and try to judge righteously. No, he felt it. Amen. He felt the pain when the nails went through his hand. He felt the shame and the ridicule when they found fault with him and they criticized him and all these things. He felt it all. He knows what it's like to be tempted. He was tempted by Satan himself in the wilderness. He, he felt uh, um, the, the heat from his own countrymen. His own brothers didn't believe in him. His people rejected him. The Bible said, he said that he came unto his own and his own rejected him not. He knows what it's like to feel rejection and to feel the, the harsh words of people he loved. He knows what it's like to feel the unbelief. His brothers didn't believe in him. He knows what it's like tonight. He felt everything. He understands everything. He is our high priest. And so Paul, right into the church, he said, we have for we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with a feeling of our infirmities, but was in all point tempted like as we are, yet without sin. And then he went on and said, Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Is this a time of need in your life? Is this a time of need in your life? Jesus is saying to you, Come to the throne of grace. Uh, oh, come to the throne of grace. Don't get all fancy. Don't get all, 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 you know, all these uh, glamorous things, if you will. I don't know if that's the right word to use. But, but we don't need all that. There are times when we need to come and fall on our knees and say, Lord, help me. Help me, Jesus, to believe. Help my unbelief, Lord. Help what I'm going through, Lord. And sometimes the most needed prayer is a prayer for ourselves. It's not a prayer for the situation. It's not a prayer for anything. Sometimes the most needed 
prayer is to get us to be straightened out in our heart and our mind to where we can believe God. Amen? To where we can trust God. Sometimes that's the most needed prayer is God, yes, you got everything under control. You are God. You're able to do the impossible. You're able to work things out. But God, I am the one that stands in need of prayer. I'm the one that needs to get my mind straightened out with you to have faith enough to believe you to bring my cares to the throne of grace and to say Lord God just help me I am the one to stand in the need of prayer I'm the one that need God to get in there and work in my heart and work in my mind and work in my soul to give me confidence and give me strength to continue to trust in the power of God and so the father understood that and so when he brought his son to Jesus he said Lord I believe I believe you Lord but help my unbelief in other words he's crying out to God, God, I believe, but there is, if there is any unbelief in me, God, help me, God. Help me, Lord God. Take it out of my heart to where I can truly 100% believe in you. Amen? We need Jesus tonight. We need Jesus. The Bible tells us in Romans chapter 12, verse 3. He said, For I say through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God had dealt to every man the measure of faith. God has given everyone a measure of faith. We all have faith to believe God. We just need help to believe Him. Amen. He have already put faith in our heart to believe. He have already put faith in our heart to believe that He is God. And the Bible said, He that cometh to God must believe that He is and that He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. So we already have faith to believe. But sometimes we just need help. Amen. We need help. Lord, help my unbelief, Jesus. Help my unbelief. You see, our faith needs help sometimes. Jesus said we got to have faith as a grain of mustard seed. That little bit of faith that can grow. That little bit of faith that can increase. Our faith is able to grow. Our faith is able to increase. Our faith is able to, to, to get better and stronger in God. We just need help. We just need help. Amen. Our faith, uh, our faith can grow in God, but we just need help. We need God to get in there and help us. Uh, and so that's, that's, wh that's when this prayer becomes so important. Lord, help my unbelief. Help me to trust you, Jesus. Help me to trust you. And the Bible tells us to trust in the Lord with all our heart. And lean not unto our own understanding, but in all our ways to acknowledge God, and He shall direct our paths. We need God. Lord, help me to trust you. Lord, help me to push away these fears, these fearful thoughts. Help me to push it away, Jesus. Help me to put it to the side, push it out of my mind. As has been shared, one of the greatest exercises a Christian can do is <laughs> called the push away. <laughs> Amen. You say, what about the push up? What about the pull up? But that's not going to help you spiritually. But the push away can help you. Amen. That's a new exercise. We can all, we can all practice that exercise. What do you mean, preacher? Push away. And this is not original. I'm just using somebody else said here. The push away. Push away those thoughts. Amen. Push away those fears. Push away those doubts. Push away those negative things. The best exercise as a Christian is to push it all away. Lord, help my own belief. Help me to push these things away. Push it out of my mind. The Bible said casting down imaginations. And every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of Christ. And bringing every thought to, to the obedience of Jesus Christ. Sometimes the best thing we need to do is push away those thoughts, uh, push away uh, all, those, uh, all those, uh, those things that are enemy to our faith, uh, doubt and fear and worry and, and all those things. Push it away, amen? Get it out of your mind. He said, cast it down. Cast down those imaginations. Cast down those things. Uh, push it out of your heart and mind and pray, Lord, help my unbelief amen help my unbelief jesus i believe you 
Help my unbelief. I've already trusted in you, God. Help me with anything that may seem to try to rob me of what you want in my life. Help me, God, to overcome it. Help me to push it away and believe you. Help me, Lord, to be spiritually strong, to believe you for the impossible. Help me, Lord God, to keep believing even when I don't see and when I don't understand, God, just help me. I'm preaching about, Lord, help me. Sometimes one of the greatest prayer we can pray is, God, help me. Help me, Jesus. Help me to believe. Help me to trust. Help me, God, to give myself 100% to you, putting my life into your hand, knowing that it's in good hands tonight. It's in the hand of the Almighty, and I need God more than anything else. So, Lord God, help me, Jesus. Amen? Amen. Help me, Lord Jesus. Help me. It's a serious problem. Serious situation. His son needed help. His son needed God, needed Jesus. But thank God the father had the, the faith enough to say, you know what? I will take my son to Jesus. You want to help? Bring it to Jesus. Amen. Man can only do so much. I thank God for everyone that helps in life. Thank God for the dry cleaners. Thank God for the People that work in the grocery store, thank God for the police officers, thank God for the firefighters, thank God for the nurse. Man, we took our son Friday, we had to take him to the after-hour care. When all the other places were, were closed, thank God that there were people still working there <laughs> at the late hours and they check out my boy, make sure he was doing good. Amen. Thank God for everybody that helps us in life. Thank God for the doctors, the nurse. And all those, they, they, they dedicate their life in service to help. Thank God for all that. But you know, as humans, we can only do so much. As humans, we can only do so much. We can only go. We all have limits. But thank God there's someone who we can turn to. And when you come to me, I'll wrap it up with that. Thank God for someone who we can turn to in our time of need. Thank God for someone that when... Uh, when nobody else can help, when it seems like no one else can, can, can get the situation fixed, thank God there is Jesus Christ. Thank God that we can come. I'll read it while she's getting ready. I'll read, read the passage of Scripture there to you again. And Jesus saying to them, he, he answered in verse 19, he, and he answered and said, O faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him to me. You see, he, the, the father had brought the young boy to Jesus' disciples. They were just ordinary men, and they couldn't help him. They couldn't help him. They tried to cast out the demon. They tried to cast out his devil, but they couldn't help him. And so when Jesus came down from the mountain, the Mount of Transfiguration, the Bible said the man, the father, ran to where Jesus was. And he said, Lord, I, I brought my son to your disciples, and they couldn't help him. They're only men. They're only men. Yes, they're great men. They're, they're godly men, but they're only men. They're only men. And Jesus answered and said, O faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I put up with you or suffer you? Bring him to me. And they brought him unto him, and he and when he saw, when he saw, when he when he saw him straightly the spirit tear him, and he fell on the ground and wallow foaming. And he asked his father, How long? Is it a ghost since this came unto him? And he said of a child. And oftentimes it had cast him into the fire and into the waters to destroy him. But if thou canst do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believe it. And straightway the father of the child cried out, and said with tears, Lord, I believe. Help. Help thou my unbelief. I'm preaching about God help me. Lord, help me, Jesus. There are times that's the greatest prayer we can pray. Lord, help me. Lord, be gracious unto me. Lord, you know what I'm dealing with, what I'm facing, what I'm going through. You know all these things of God. Lord, help me. As you bow your heads and close your eyes in reverence to the Lord tonight. God help us.
Help us, Jesus. We need you, Lord. We need you. Lord, help me. Help me to believe, Lord. Help me to have faith. Help me to have confidence in you. Just help me, Jesus. And God will tonight help our unbelief. She's going to play. Let's spend a little bit of time praying, seeking the Lord. Make this your prayer tonight. Lord, help me.
Praise the Lord. Appreciate the privilege. Man, God's presence is with us tonight. We just need Jesus more and more every day, every day of our life. And, and so y'all have a, a blessed week in the Lord. Trust God. Pray, seek the Lord. When those thoughts of unbelief and doubt comes, just seek the Lord. Lord, help me. Be gracious to me, Jesus, and help me to overcome these things. Amen. God, help me to be a better person. Better father, better mother, better Christian. We need a lot of help. A better citizen, whatever it is, God, a better employee, whatever it is, God, just help me. Help me to be better. Amen. And so, y'all have a wonderful week. We'll pr- be praying. I'm praying. Continue giving thanks. Like I said, we pray. Let's believe God for all the things we ask God for. And let's trust the Lord. Put it in the hand of God and trust Him. If He can't help us, nobody else can. Amen. And so let's trust the Lord. Father, thank you for this time to be in your presence. We love and appreciate you. We give all glory and honor to you. We thank you for your amazing grace, your love. Thank you for helping us. Thank you for keeping your hand upon us. Protect us. Watch over us. Give grace and mercy to every one of us in our lives. All that call upon you, be gracious, O God. And Father, we want to thank you for everything you've done. We love and appreciate you. And thank you. In Jesus' name we ask these things. Amen.